This video is all about prototype packaging. After completing the design phase for this product, we needed to send out a few samples. The idea here is to design the smallest possible package that will prevent damage in the often brutal shipping system. The challenge is that these items are both heavy and delicate. There are also three different versions of this design that a single package will need to contain. These prototypes will be made on my new vacuum former. Like any manufacturing process, vacuum forming requires you to design a purpose-built mold. To do that, it's important to understand the limitations of this process. On the machine I built, the left and right sides of the plastic sheet do not get quite hot enough to pull good detail. This isn't much of an issue because we actually want space around the mold. The center of the platen or build surface is where we pull the best detail. For that reason, the most complex shapes of our mold will fall inside that sweet spot. For testing this vacuum former, I used this block. It was not possible to separate these without destroying the plastic in the process. The sides of a mold need to be tapered by at least 3 to 5 degrees in order to avoid this issue. The corners of a mold should also be rounded to help reduce webbing. Because I'm 3D printing my mold, I tested some plastic items. These happen to have an open area that causes the thermoformed parts to get locked onto the surface. This is another thing to consider when designing a mold. At the bottom of the pyramids, you can see some deformation generated by the process. To counteract this, I will need to make the walls of the 3D printed part fairly thick. Here's an example of professional vacuum formed packaging. We're going to use the same principles that you see here. Basically, there are impressions for the parts and smooth transitions in between. You can also see divots in the lowest corners of these shapes. The mold for this has small vents that allow air to flow out during the vacuum forming process. We want to incorporate similar structures in the right locations. With all these concepts in mind, I printed a mold. The wall thickness is 3 mm and infill is 15%. This thing took 60 hours to print and weighs almost 1 kilo. I used PETG filament because it can handle higher temperatures than PLA. All of the parts were fully drafted with smooth transitions from one shape into the next with the vents placed at the lowest points. To help this thing show up on camera, I painted it. I do not recommend doing this because the paint is going to melt. Felt pads were used as risers to make sure that the vents were not accidentally closed off. Now let's see if this thing works. The plastic is pulling into the corners, but unfortunately it's not 100% there. Here it is at quarter speed. The optimal forming temperature for PETG is 125 through 165 C, so the temperatures are in range. The deepest parts of the plastic stay at a good temperature for quite some time, but there just isn't quite enough power to pull it all the way in. A 0.04 inch sheet of plastic would likely perform better. The 0.06 plastic used in this test ended up being much stronger than it needed to be. One troubleshooting option is to push down on the plastic in the corners. This isn't effective on large surfaces, but works okay as a spot treatment. Because we have hot plastic on a plastic mold, it's best to cool things down as fast as possible. You can use compressed air or even a leaf blower for this process. As I mentioned earlier, the paint melted on contact with the hot plastic. Some baby powder was enough to prevent it from sticking too badly. Using a utility knife, I cut just above the base of the mold where the plastic is flat. Thick plastics can be hard to cut because the flat sides cut easily and the corners are stiff and hard to cut. Although the mold wasn't perfect, the registration on the mushrooms was just good enough. The same was true for the foam backer and the rest of the parts. The foam backer needs to be pressed in more firmly than this, but what's a packaging video without testing the final product? I lost a few small pieces of fill material out of the pot. For production that will have to be tweaked, 
In the end, this is just another reason why it's important to make prototype packaging. We've decided to go with foam packaging and a much smaller vacuum formed part. After all, this is a premium product that needs a premium unboxing. If you want to check out other various aspects of these prototypes, feel free to watch those videos next. This pot of mushrooms is for sale through Crucible Company, a venture between me and a few friends. Buying one helps to ensure that there will be more deep dives into product development on this channel. You can also donate with PayPal or become a patron on Patreon. Please remember to like and hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.